Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV. And I'm fishing on the River Tyne today, just between Hexham and Corbridge. And it's a river that I know really well, um, but not from course fishing, from salmon fishing. I've salmon fished on the, the main Tyne and the South Tyne for over 20 years, and I absolutely love this river and this part of the country. It's only really the last two years that I've started to course fish here. And about two months ago, I fished the Riverfest qualifier here and actually drew the same section. And although I only won my section, I had five days in a chub for seven and a half pound. And I was just amazed at the size of the days. They must have been averaging 12 ounces. And it was that that really inspired us to come back here and have a go for the dace. So you can see that um, the river here is a big wide river and I met up with Steve Eddy who's one of the local matchmen that sort of pioneers the match fishing in this area and he suggests we try this peg here. It's between two sets of rapids so you can see the rapids up there and then we've got this steadier, slightly deeper water running down into those rapids. And Steve explained that this is an area that's a consistent spot for catching dace. And he also thought that we might catch some of the bigger dace that I managed to connect with last time I came. So Steve explained that even though it is a big river, it's not actually that deep. Um, the conditions today, we've got a, a foot of water on, there was a big flood about five or six days ago so the Tyne's a spate river and it can come up very quickly and also drop very quickly so I think there was about three foot on yesterday and there's about a foot on today and um, from that side of things it's pretty perfect really for course fishing on here. Um, Steve explained that the flow is moving over towards us and the most of the depth is actually this side of the river so that's how it's proved really. Oh that's actually a little salmon par. That's the first one I've caught today. I don't think you'll see it but I'll, go, I'll get him straight back. But um, it's only actually about four or five foot maximum depth and most of that depth is this sort of quarter side of the river. And um, I've been fishing for about two hours now and it started off pretty tough. You can see we've got a, a very strong downstream wind that's making presentation difficult and um, we didn't really catch any dace. It took me about an hour to catch my first dace and I've perhaps had 12 or 15 dace now up to around about 8 ounces so Chappie was starting to get a bit worried but we've managed to start to catch some fish and um, it's actually proving to be really interesting. When I fished here on the river fest it was similar conditions, maybe not quite as strong as this wind and uh, I caught on a waggler that day and that's the tactics that I'm employing on this session today. Well, it's um, given us some heart that I've started to catch these days and start to try and work out how best to present my bait in these tough conditions. But one thing that is absolutely amazing me is the amount of salmon and sea trout that I can see running the river. I must have seen between 10 or 20 salmon already and there's a good number of salmon anglers out so it kind of it is a an interesting river to fish it's obviously predominantly a game river so salmon and trout but the there is a course scene on here and three or four matches every year that are always very well attended so it's a it's a really interesting venue and uh, I'm just so interested to see what we can catch today
Well, I mentioned the tactics that I'm fishing a waggler today. I wanted to fish the float over perhaps fishing a, a feeder or ledger in. Um, obviously, float fishing is the best way of uh, building up a, a way to silverfish like Dace. And um, as soon as I found the depth was so shallow, and obviously we've got this very strong downstream wind, I decided that I'd set two wagglers up. If it wasn't so windy, I think a stick float would have been a, a great method to fish with. But due to the wind and the fact that this peg's so open, I just thought a waggler's got to be better because fishing a waggler like this means that you can sink the line and get the line under the water to help with presentation. If I was to fish with a top and bottom float today, I think it would have been really difficult to present the bait properly. If the peg had been deeper and I could have fished a bigger stick float or a bolo float, then I probably could have made it work, but it's definitely perhaps a bit too shallow for that today. So when I'm fishing a waggler like this in the wind, um, I want to be able to cast slightly downstream so I'm straight behind the float. And the other thing that you can see that I'm doing is I'm casting past where I'm actually catching the fish and then I'm sinking the line by drawing the float back into the feed area and that's just helping the line to stop being blown about by the wind. It's definitely not easy and I'm just having a spell now of missed bites. Whether they're small fish like those par, I've had a few minnows as well, or whether perhaps the fish have moved up in the water, I don't know. I'll just persevere for a few casts, but I'm fishing just off the bottom and I've got five or six number eight shot down the line and I'm literally just, oh there we go, there's a fish. I'm just letting the float go so I'm not trying to mend the line. Obviously I've, um, I've cast the float in position, I've sunk the line and then I'm just letting the float run through and uh, that's not a bad dace. I suppose that's the sort of typical size I've been catching so far. I'll just try and hold it up for you, which isn't easy. But okay, it's not a monster, but I don't know, three or four ounces, and that's a fantastic weight builder in a match. I have had a couple up to about eight ounces. But um, I've got to say, I haven't really sorted it out yet. I haven't got the fish lined up and I haven't got into a great rhythm of, of catching them yet. Feed-wise, I've been feeding quite a lot of hemp and I've been loose feeding maggots. And uh, I think hemp's just a great bait when you're fishing for roach and dace on rivers. It's quite heavy, so it's going to sink quickly and hopefully attract the fish, but not feed them too much. And then I'm just sort of feeding loose fed maggots over the top just varying it and trying to work out, first of all, where those maggots are landing and perhaps where the fish are going to be feeding. So that was a, a little tiny fish, look, that's a minnow. So that's the culprit then, that was a very fast bite and uh, just perhaps making it a bit a hard day, a little bit harder, the fact that I'm catching those minnows as well, but I'll keep persevering. You can see that I'm casting out slightly downstream and then sinking the line. And I've been varying the distance out that I'm fishing as well. I'm trying to feed the maggots in one, one area, the maggots and hemp in one area, and then trying to work out where the dace are by following the fish in and out and up and down my swim. When you've got a downstream wind like this, you don't want the fish to be feeding in front of you if you can help it, because that really makes presentation almost impossible. You want the fish to be feeding downstream so you can really help improve presentation. So I think I'll have a cast a bit further downstream this time, and just see if perhaps the fish have dropped a bit further down the peg.
there we go. That's another day. It's not a massive one, but at least it's not a minnow. It's a job to even swing the fishing in this wind. Well that's the stamp of dates we're looking for, that one's 8 or 9 ounces, it's absolutely beautiful. The rod I'm using today is worth mentioning, it's our 15 foot number one and I do like fishing with a longer rod, particularly on rivers and when it's very windy like this today because it just helps, the extra length really helps with float control. I think it also means you can pick the line up quicker as well to hit the bites because obviously dace are, are fast biters. But that's kind of been the dilemma and problem today is that I've got to be able to try and present the float properly at the right speed of the current without it being affected by the wind and I'm having to catch the fish slightly off the bottom because the dace are feeding and they've come up in the water. Um, on another day, perhaps when it's colder and the fish are feeding on the bottom, when you're targeting fish like roach and dace and chub, you can use a, a thick peacock waggler and drag line along the bottom, particularly on a cleaner peg like this, which doesn't seem to be any snags on. Oh, there's another minnow. But um, I can't do that today because the fish are, as I say, they're up in the water. So what I've actually got is I've got a spread out shotting pattern of number eights. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight number eights now. And they're probably in about a two foot length of line. 
and I'm finding that that's helping me get the bait down in a positive way so I can spot the bites but it's also giving me a, a kind of on the drop presentation as well I keep trying bulking it up which is a a rig I love to fish with when I'm days fishing and I'm catching well because it makes the rig so positive and you can really read the bites but they're not responding to that today so at the moment I'm having to fish spread out shot like that and I'm actually fishing a much heavier waggler than I would if there wasn't the wind when I'm fishing at this range so I'm actually fishing a 4AA waggler and I'm only really fishing maximum three rod lengths out but I need the weight in the float to be able to control it in this downstream wind. So some days float fishing on a river can be easy. On other days like this, it can be a real challenge. And I think you've just got to get the right mindset and keep experimenting, changing your shotting pattern and even st types of floats and try and work out what's best on the day. And I think sometimes you never, you never do. You know, you've just got to accept that it's a really difficult day and you just catch as much as you can, particularly when you're match fishing, obviously. But the quality of the fishing on the tine can be absolutely amazing. And I know from some of my friends that fish the matches here, and oh, I lost that one, that was a decent day. But they've had day weights, I think the records were well over 60 pounds. And they do have some regular matches on here that it's possible to book onto and fish. Um, actually, there was a match here yesterday, which is a, a really f famous match called the Gurkha and it's one I remember reading about when I was younger in the magazines and spotting that they were catching some huge weights of dace and I believe they've been having those matches since around about 1978 and they're really well attended matches so the Tyne's not a venue where you can fish matches all the time but the matches they do have on here are, are definitely worth investigating. I'll get little spells of bigger days, those sort of days between four ounces and eight ounces. And then I get another run of smaller days than even minnows. So I'm really sort of racking my brain how I can uh, keep the better fish coming. I've actually adjusted where I'm feeding the maggots. I was feeding the maggots slightly upstream to start with, just simply because I was worried about the fish dropping down the peg. But the dace that I'm catching are coming up on the feed. And uh, what I'm doing as well is every so often, perhaps every eight to 10 casts, I'm putting two or three good pouches of hemp in to just try and pin the dace down in one area. I think if it was a match, I'd be getting a bit frustrated because I'd be thinking everyone else is catching more than me, but it's gonna be tough for anybody fishing the river today so it's just a matter of picking out picking off what fish you can well another difficult factor today is this bright sunshine and of course typically it's kind of moved around in front of me so I've had a very bright glare to contend with as well and uh, I don't think I wouldn't have, I would have been able to even fish without these sunglasses they're polarizing glasses and I got a slight magnification because I'm slightly struggling now to see my float at long range but I think it would almost be impossible to fish today without uh, polarizing sunglasses
Right then, let's have a look at the tackling rigs that we've used today. So I mentioned the rod, it's a CR10 15 foot number one, and I've matched that up with a CS5 4000 reel. It's a beautiful reel. It's actually constructed from uh, reinforced carbon and you get two match balls with it. So it's a really fantastic match reel. Um, we've covered waggler fishing in some of our other videos and you might want to look at the, the river video we did on the River Forth um, where we explain a lot about rigs for the waggler but that was the best float today. That's actually a 5AA straight peacock waggler. You can see I've blacked the tip out. Obviously it's been so windy the black's shown up best against the ripple. And the straight waggler's been pretty much essential really. Due to the wind, um, just to be able to dot it down and, and spot the bites, it would be hard to fish an insert waggler today. I've got most of the bolt round the float and I've experimented all day with different shotting patterns. You might want to check out our River Fourth Days video where I caught on the waggler and I actually do a detailed explanation of how to make the rig. Um, hook lengths I've swapped between 012 and 010 and the hook I settled on the end was a Camasan B56018. I mentioned about the fact that I was catching best on a single maggot today, so that's been the best, best hook. Um, I started off on an interesting waggler and one that I've been doing on really well this year on windy days. And you can see that's a very strong, sorry, very long, thin peacock waggler that's slightly loaded. Um, it didn't work very well today and I think that's because the peg's so shallow. If the swim had been a bit slower and deeper, then that's a float that I found really works well because it cuts under the surface toe very well. I did set up a, a smaller insert waggler. This was um, a 5BB Dave Harrell. Uh, I caught a few fish on it but it was just wasn't heavy enough and long enough for these windy conditions. I've been fishing for about three hours now and uh, I'm catching fairly well. It's a bit frustrating because I'm catching nice days like this one and then they seem to disappear and I'm getting pestered by smaller days and even minnows but I'll just try and hold that one up for you. It's another Another lovely day, perhaps five or six ounces that one. They're absolutely immaculate fish, so beautiful. But I've continued to keep changing my shotting pattern and feeding, and I'm actually feeding even further downstream with the maggots now. The fish have definitely come up on the feed, and whereas to start with I was a bit worried about feeding and perhaps feeding too many maggots and the, ro and the days dropping down the swim, they're actually right on the feed. So that's helping me a bit with this wind because I can feed further downstream where the, where the days are feeding up in the water and present my float a lot better. But it's, it's been really frustrating. I'm, I'm bumping fish, I've bumped some nice days and I haven't settled on the right hook yet. So I'm having a, a very challenging day but I think whenever you're fishing a venue like this, it's just, it's fascinating really. It's obviously a very wild venue and it's a wild day, but we're slowly catching some, or putting a good net of days together. So I think that's the, the great thing about our sport really, is no matter how many times you've been days fishing on a river, by fishing different venues in different conditions, you're always learning. And I think you've got to be prepared to, to really question you know, everything that you're doing all the time to get the best out of the peg.
Well, this feels like a better fish. I'm hoping it's not a trout. It's not fighting like a trout. Normally the trout fight really erratically and start splashing, but I wonder if this is a big dace or a chub. It looks like it might be a small chub. Yeah, it is. Well, that's interesting. I did catch a chub on the river fest and uh, that one was two to three pound, but that's a, a lovely chub, about eight or 10 ounces. Be great if some of them start to make an appearance. Well, I've been feeding at least once a cast from the very beginning, and I think that's an important point as well, because you know, it was a good, good hour really before I even caught a fish, but I suppose it might be tempting then to feed less often. But you've got to get that constant stream of bait into the swim to attract the fish to where you're fishing. And I think also when you're catching dace like this, they're so hungry, you know, you've got to keep feeding them and get in a situation where they're feeding and competing where you can catch them. And that now is right on top of where I'm feeding. The other thing I've noticed is um, it's not worth fishing close in. Um, the, where the days are definitely in the slightly pace of your water. And I think as the day's gone on, the pace has actually slackened a little bit. So I'm actually now just fishing slightly further out. Seems to be that the dace do want to be in that flowing water. So obviously it's important to get into a good rhythm of casting, feeding, every cast, so that you get that continual fall of bait through the water. And obviously, uh, you vary that amount depending on how the fish are responding. Right, I'm going to make a change because I've stopped catching for the last three or four runs and uh, I've been getting some fast bites so I'm going to try a little mini bulk and see if that makes any difference. Well, I mentioned about the fact that I was bumping a few fish and um, I've been switching between 20, 18 and 16 hooks. At the moment, an 18 B560 seems like the right pattern for a single maggot. And it's single maggot that I've been fishing for that's been best today. But um, in an ideal situation, if I could get them on a size 16, I can... Uh, hopefully start to bully the fish a bit quicker and I can also try and catch them on double maggot. And when you're dace fishing that's a great advantage because it's quite good sometimes to have two or three different strikes during a cast if you're missing bites and obviously if you've got two maggots you've got more chance of uh, bait still being on. But at the moment it's not easy and a single maggot seems to be the best bait. Well, every so often it just goes a bit calmer like this. And um, if it were to stay like that, I've got a, a lighter rod set up, or a lighter float rather, and uh, I think that would really help with the missed bites. Obviously a better presentation with a lighter float, but um, at times the wind really gets up and uh, 
it's almost impossible to fish. The rods in our CR10 range come in different lengths and different power ratings. And for the match rods, we've got match rods from 11 foot up to 16 foot with actions ranging from a number one, which is the lightest action, up to a number three, which is the most powerful. And it's the 15 foot number one that I'm using today. And it's a great rod when you're fishing like this for silverfish like roach and dace because it's got a lovely soft hollow tip and then a progressive action through the blank. So if you were to hook a, a bonus fish like a big chub, you've still got plenty of power to deal with it. But on windy days like this, and when you're striking quite hard, even into smaller fish like dace, you do need a softer tip that's gonna help cushion the strike. Oh, the wind's just dropped. I hope it stays like this. There we go. You can just see the tip now. Just bouncing with this dace. We've still got plenty of power to play the fish quickly and swing it in, but given the fact that I've said that, I think I'm gonna net this one just to make sure I get it. If I was fishing with a bigger hook, I'd have no problem swinging that in, but on an 18, the way Dace fight, they're so erratic and such a jagged fight, but there you go. It's a lovely, I'm gonna say six ounce Dace. Well, I've tried really up in the feed and it seemed to put the fish off. Whether I've um, pushed them further down my peg, I don't know. But I've been fishing for five hours now and we're gonna make that the last dace. And it's not a bad dace to, to end on. Another prime, absolutely perfect, beautiful tine dace. That's absolutely fantastic really, considering the conditions. We've weighed the fish and I've got 15 pound a dace and that one chub. So I've actually really enjoyed it. It's been a challenge and we do like to go and visit different venues around the country. And although the Tyne's not a famous coarse fishing river, as I mentioned, there's some fantastic matches on here that are held along the stretch, definitely worth a look. And there are accessible venues to fish if you want to give the Tyne a go. Thanks for watching.